Welcome to Ainsley News. It's Monday the 17th of May. We have been warned when the Fed loses control. You spent your life working hard to save for the future and it all comes down to where you invest those savings as to what happens from there. You've got the GFC still clear in your memory. You've just experienced the deepest but shortest recession along with a pandemic and now have an unprecedented economic environment based on central bank and government fiscal stimulus against the biggest debt pile we've ever seen. It's a lot to get your head around. We've got a lot of good feedback in our last article that we discussed with you from Ambrose Evan Pritchard of London's Telegraph newspaper. The following we're going to read now is equally good at walking you through this predicament and why the Fed may well be losing control. This from that article. Ignoring all the warning signs, the markets are losing faith in the Fed. The US is engaged in an astonishing monetary experiment. The Federal Reserve is still conducting quantitative easing even as the rate of headline inflation hits 4.2%. Core inflation has risen to a 25-year high of 3%, recording the biggest slump in a single month since 1981. Factory gate inflation has been running at 7.1% annual growth over the last six months, even before full reopening. The Biden administration is running a budget deficit of 13% of GDP this year, even though an output gap closed in April and large parts of the economy are overheating. Small firms cannot find workers. Unfilled job openings have reached a record high. Yet interest rates are zero, and the Fed is still buying $120 billion or $155 billion Australian of bonds each month, directly financing part of Washington's war economy debt issuance. It is persisting even even though the broad M3 money supply has grown at 24% over the last year. It is downplaying all evidence of pent-up inflation as temporary. What the Fed is doing is pure drop of helicopter money. Inflation could be headed for double digits by the end of the year, says Lars Christensen, founder of Markets and Money Advisor and author of a book on Milton Friedman. The economy is at full capacity and the money stock has grown by a fifth at a time when everybody was locked down and unable to spend. There is going to be one big or one a big one-off jump in prices, and it could happen very fast if the Fed allows the liquidity to feed through. They're ignoring all the warning signs just as they did in the 1970s. At some point, markets will stop believing that the Fed is behaving like a credible central bank, he said. Former New York Chief Bill Dudley said his old alma mater has fallen behind the curve, and the longer it delays, the more brutal it will be. Once they start, they're going to be too late, he told Bloomberg Surveillance. The thing that people don't fully appreciate is that when they catch up, the level of short-term rates are going to climb much higher than currently priced by financial markets. People need to be contingent or cognizant of those risks, he said. The Fed insists that the inflation spike is transitory. Vice Chairman Richard Clarida, the high priest of policy, nevertheless confesses that the latest surge has caught the institution off guard. I was surprised. The number was well above what I and outside forecasters expected, he said. The benign view is that inflation is distorted by base effects and by a handful of reopening items, such as the 10% jump in airline fares or an equivalent surge in used car prices linked in turn to the semiconductor crunch in the car industry. Clarita says COVID has torn up the playbook of the business cycle, turning the post-pandemic phase into a roller coaster ride. Yet one might ask what will happen when the 11% rise in US home prices over the past year, greater than the subprime peak in 2006, filters into the shelter component, making up a third of the inflation index. Shelter costs typically lag prices or property prices by 12 months. The other benign argument is that yields on 10-year US treasuries remain calm and have not confirmed inflation angst. Unfortunately, there is a technical reason for this. Matt King from Citigroup says the US Treasury is running down its huge TGA account held at the Fed to cover spending needs. This fund amounted to $1.4 trillion in March. The frozen liquidity is now being released at a torrential pace and is flooding into the bond market. Over the last eight weeks or so, we got literally $700 billion US dollars of boost to US bank reserves. It's almost tripled the effect of the Fed asset purchases. It's like a QE effect, a whoosh of liquidity with too much money chasing too few safe assets, King said. Bond yields could spike this summer as the TGA drawdown peters out. The Fed follows a new Keynesian lodestar and no longer pays attention to monetary data. We will find out soon enough whether this matters. The elephant in the room is the bloated stock of money sitting in bank accounts. 
the excess savings of US households has reached $2.3 trillion. The New York Fed said people have been using a third of their unspent holdings to pay off debt, but that does not mean that they will continue to do so. They may go on a spree instead as the country reopens. This extra money is as or is inert as long as velocity of circulation remains at record, record lows. Andrew Harris from Fathom says velocity typically reverts to its trend level at a pace of 10% a quarter after a period of divergence. If that would happen at this case, it would imply an inflation peak of 8%. It is true that velocity kept falling after, Lehman, after the Lehman Brothers episode, but that occurred in radically different circumstances. The credit channel was broken and banks were being forced by regulators to raise their capital buffers. Emergency QE was required to prevent a contraction of the money supply and a slide into deflation. American banks are in rude good health today. The latest Fed survey suggests that credit standards are starting to ease again after tightening during the pandemic. If loans pick up rapidly, the banking multiplier will set off an explosive inflationary boom under current policy settings. Christensen said that once people see prices rising all around them, velocity could take off very fast. This would ignite the excess stock of money. For the last 30 years, people have been used, uh, been used to inflation being well anchored. When they realise that this isn't anymore, there could be a rush to spend, he said. He compared the Fed's insurance uh, to the onset of the 1970s. Others see echoes of the 1940s when the Fed was co-opted by the Roosevelt and Truman administrations to ensure cheap funding for federal programs. It capped yields by means of financial repression. The aggregate price level rose by 50% over five years, and it was a haircut for creditors. Ultimately, the bond vigilantes may cease to believe assurances that inflation is under control and take matters into their own hands, imposing monetary tightening on a reluctant Fed. Rather than a taper tantrum, it would be a data tantrum. Dudley said 10-year yields could hit 4% in short order once the process begins. This would be an earthquake for the global currency system or an edifice for inflated asset prices built on assumptions of near zero borrowing costs. We have all been warned. Dark news this morning, uh, but if you're a bullion holder, we could probably have seen this coming for quite a while. Remember anzbullion.com.au for all things physical, anzwealth.com.au for all things cryptocurrency, and goldsilverstandard.com for our own cryptocurrency built and backed by real silver and gold. I'll catch you tomorrow. Enjoy your Monday.